Pastor Darius here. I hope you are well. I hope God is still your source in everything that you are doing. That's my prayer, and I say that often because there are a lot of amazing resources, and we're to use them in proper context, but we use a resource through a main source. In other words, every source that we take, there should be a main source that brings resources, okay? I hope God is your source, okay? Our capital campaign, we're excited about it. Uh, we're, we're raising $500,000 just to start to do our addition. Uh, we have some other ideas in our hearts and in our minds that God's going to do way beyond that. But it's better to have a star and not reach for it than not to have a star at all in your infant stage. So we're here uh, to share with you so you could consider being partners with us in this endeavor to raise $500,000 to start. Of course, you can see our services on Sunday to see where we are and to say, I'd like to help them reach that goal. Of course, what you make happen for others, God makes happen for you. It's true. It's a principle that he uses, okay? As well, on March 30th, the Tommy's reunion will be at the Oasis. That's Pastor John Hanna's church. Uh, we'll be there Resurrection Weekend. That's Easter weekend, y'all. That's Saturday, March 30th. When I tell you I promise you, you'll enjoy yourself. The Tommies are going to be coming with all of their songs that have blessed the gospel industry for decades. And guess what? Any of y'all ever listen to old school R&B? Um, uh, a Chair is Not a House by Luther and, and some good old stuff where the Tommies is the same gospel institution. I'm, of course, was with Milton Bronson, Minister of Music. I'm the writer, so you're getting the real authentic thing. So on March 30th, the Tommies will be in concert at the Oasis. That's Pastor John's Hannah Church in concert with the incomparable Leandria Johnson. Uh, 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 Lord, deliver me, of course. And then we're going to come and we're going to, oh my goodness, oh, Y'all know that high note on if I be lifted. You see me just hit it. I'm going to hit it on that night. All right. We're going to have some fun. Come uh, March 30th at the Oasis. That's Pastor John Hannah's church. The Tommy's reunion will be there. And I'm telling you, we're going to be enjoying ourselves with our new um, hit. My man's made up. Of course, I wrote that 2.0. I call it 2.0. My man's made up. No, I got to, I'm to teach me how to dance. I'm going to do something that night. I'm going to do, I ain't going to do crisscross though. I, no, I'm going to do crisscross. I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. Okay. <laughs> March 30th at the Oasis. Find yourself in the place you're going to really, really, really enjoy your Self, okay. All right, let's go through the word of God. I'm excited about the word of God. All that God is doing, a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway. Email us, let us know, dbrooks at gracecentral.net or gracecentral.net. Let us know that you're enjoying these Tuesday night messages and do me a favor, sit down with them, really listen to them. Um, you know what I found out studying the word of God? The word of God says the road to destruction is crowded, but the road to righteousness, you find a straggler every now and then. or Wherever there's a, not, not a criticism, just an observation, ain't scared of nobody and ain't hating on nobody. Wherever there is a lot of people, what God is saying is there's often many distractions. Uh, so probably you got to be careful with what you're going there to get because it's more distraction than there are what you really say you want. It's kind of sort of like Black Friday when you go to a store. Everybody's in line. They're about to run you in. And you're like, wait a minute, wait, I can get this another way without having to go through all of this. That's the objective that God teaches us about the word of God where he says the road to destruction is crowded, but the road to righteousness or maturity or person who see things clear. It's very difficult to find people in these places. I'm one of these people who I don't like to have what everybody else is having. I like to create my own. And because of God's word, he teaches me how to bag up and process things alone. And it's in that place that I can have a fulfilled life with the way God has it. That's why I love his word. And this is what we're going to kind of sort of be talking about today versus the boring place, the, the boring place versus the problem place. Okay, okay, check this out. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore, shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Y'all, check this out. It is better to trust in the Lord 
them to put confidence in the man. And wait till I explain this because when you first look at it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up, which is why I share with you, you got to study God's word and get with someone who can show you that studying God's word, watch this, is more relative than it is um, difficult to see or receive. When God is your source and you really around the right kind of people who teach you how to hear God, study God for your own self, it becomes so much more clear um, to understand and process. So it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. I am going to use for a thought today the boring place versus the problem place. The boring place versus the problem place. Okay, check this out. Of course, I always tell you that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So, and I also share with you all, when you read the word of God, the Lord, God, Jesus, they're one. They're, it's, they're the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is simply one. God is in charge. The son is the son of Jesus Christ who came here because God says, I'm sick. I made y'all jokers. And because he decided to die for the sins of the world, y'all ain't going to come directly to me. Y'all going to come through him. And so God's spirit and Jesus' spirit becomes the same. His desire is that we have a creative and a blessed life through the, he, how he directs us to do it. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. The old school used to say Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is how one is being themselves. It's how God's word produces one. And it's how the one that hears, understands, and obey God's word in proper context produces themselves. And sometimes you have a boring place, and sometimes there is a problem place. Watch this. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me, or when I'm doing what I know I'm supposed to do, I'm assisting and around people, watch this, who understands the objective of something, and they help me when I'm doing my part to accomplish an objective. And it's vice versa. When you read this, it says the word of God takes your part with you, with them that help you when you do what you're supposed to do. God puts the right kind of people around you when you do what you're supposed to do to help you to see something clear and to see a objective and a focus to accomplish. When God puts two people together, it's always an agenda that makes them one. Not them looking at each other like, I'm going to help you, you're going to help me. No, because my desires are different from yours and your desires are different from theirs. So when you rightly divide in the word of God, which is a boring place, is God shares with us that I'm to take the word of God, which is my part, and walk it and do it. And when I'm around people with them, they help me. Or those kind of people see what I'm trying to accomplish, and they help me. And vice versa, that's how you're supposed to be operating, too. You get it? Watch this. Therefore, since I want to show you how this go, shall I see my desire upon them that hate me? Or why is it that I want to be around people who don't See this like this. There it go right there. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. <laughs> Why don't I see that what I really want, the people around me cannot give me that? It is my responsibility to see insight, not the people, but how God has me doing things, but the people around me 
can see it and assist you there. And if you are in God's word and you're doing something, there are people that's supposed to be around you to assist you in accomplishing something. And you can see it clear. But it's also that you're around people that you would wish you could they could see where you are and what you're doing. But their hate, the hate is not hating like the language we use. But this hate means um, unhealthy or not clear thoughts. God doesn't use crazy words if you don't rightly divide them. This hate means people who just see things differently than you. Mm -hmm. So therefore shall I see my desire or I should see me in places, relationships, experiences that hates the way I see things and they don't see things. Sometimes that can be not only an uncomfortable place, but it's boring. You kind of figure it out. Watch this. It is better to trust in God's word, which is what we just read. God just told us, um, the Lord maketh my part with them that helps me. With the word of God, it says it's better to trust in the Lord or in his word which is what we're reading. And there is, it's better for you to just do your part, do what you're supposed to do, and pay attention that while you focus doing that, there are going to be people that's going to help you do that. Especially when God is in it, and my purpose is in his purpose, and his purpose is in his purpose. He says, trust in the word of God, then to put confidence in man. I like that confidence place. Because people of God, I'm going to tell you something. Trust in God's word. Trust is dependable. Write that down. Here's when you know trust is the word that's beneficial. Watch this. You got to rightly divide God's word so well that there are some people, watch this, that you can trust. But you're not trusting people you can see the God in them that do what they're supposed to do that does what you do. In other words, the word of God says do all things decently in order. <clears throat> if you find someone, if you're on time and another person's on time, check this out. You can almost say, I trust that person. Ever since I've been with them, they've been on time. So when he says it's better to trust in the word, he's saying, when you go in the word of God and you know what the word of God says that I'm supposed to do and other people are supposed to do, trust the word. So when people do the word, you can see God in them. When people don't do the word, you can almost say, you know what, that's not godly. I ain't mad at them, but that's not the way this thing is supposed to be. This is what he means when he says that it is better to trust in the word than to put confidence in man. Because in other words, or in other words, outside of the word of God, you will find yourself putting confidence in somebody. And because you don't see what kind of person they are, you put confidence in them and then you fail or they fail the objective of what you're trying to do. You have a, um, uh, like for instance, uh, uh, when I'm going to help somebody sing and I got to be at church at nine o'clock, whoever I'm assisting to sing, they're supposed to be on time because I'm assisting them. They want me to assist them. So the time factor is that both of us understand. That's to trust God's word. That's why often the rule is uh, to be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. And to be late, a person just don't consider you. And people who don't consider you, the word of God says, make sure your part in doing my work that the people respect the fact that you are accountable, that they need to be accountable to help you accomplish a thing. The Lord maketh my part with them that help me. In other words, I'm supposed to do my part, and people are supposed to do their part. Now, if they don't, that's not a bad thing. All God wants you to do is the word of God says, I make me do what I'm supposed to do, and I'm supposed to be around people that's supposed to do what they're supposed to do. That's what this is. And he says, and if I do this, <clears throat> I'll see where I am dealing with people 
who don't see things. But I'll see where I am. He says, I shall see my desire upon them. Or where I am, I can see, well, that's not the way. This is the believer. The gift of the choices. The choice. It's one who chooses God's way for direction. There are some people who don't care about this. And they mess up relationships. They mess up things. He's not talking about these people. He's talking about to the committed ones who know God's word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway. <clears throat> I know who they say I am, but who do you say I am? He's talking about these people. These people who are dealing with sickness and mental illness. He says, come over here. Let me show you how that the boring place is not cool. It's, it's boring to try to get people to see what you see. You shouldn't have to do that. Watch this. But you were to be around people who see what we see because God has them because they're the kind of people who want God's word for them and they want to be around like-minded people. I had a speaker here a couple of Sundays ago, James Borche, and he texted me after every service. Man, look, look I Great Central, man, they are the bomb. They, the people there, they just, because watch this, the way the head is, is the way the body is. It doesn't matter our differences here at Great Central. We got to know the word because that's the only avenue we can make this thing work when it comes to God. And so I teach the truth so we can all see it, even in my humanness. You know, the word of God says, do all things decently and in order. Y'all, that's excellence in order. And if you do this, you'll always stay the course with how God wants things to turn out with everybody. He says it's better to, to trust in God's word. Then to put confidence in man. I hope you're being blessed by this. The Lord maketh my part with them that help me. In other words, he keep me in this right place and he'll put the right kind of people that see things God's way to be with me. Therefore, or another and as well, I want you to see that your desires upon them that don't see things like this. It could be somebody you wish could see it or some friends or some people that you see with potential you see how they do things? It's crazy. Ain't this crazy amazing? You know, you should see you in reference of your participation in and with them. That your trajectory says, wait a minute. They cool and they dress good and they look good, but man, the way they see things and do things ain't at all where I know God's word says things should be. And he says it's better to put trust God's word than to put confidence in those kind of dynamic situations, experiences. Or if we have to use people, we call them humans. Look at man. He said, man, <laughs> I have learned that God has given us some of the most amazing privileges to be able to see some amazing when we use our heart versus our eyes, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against how God has this thing designed. That's what that means. On how he desires one to serve the word. I am blessed by serving. It's a very rewarding place for me. Even in the things that I personally desire, I have found some of my best blessings were through the experiences of me serving, just serving, doing my part in what I'm supposed to do. Over at Grace Central, when Wonderful started this food pantry, she just wanted to start it. She did her part. Therefore, God put her in a position where people can come help her without trauma. I'm talking about you too. When you do what God say do, when it comes to what you're doing, church, finances, tithes, and offerings, being careful how you choose decisions and choices when it comes to you, he says, don't you worry. I'm going to take care of your part and make sure the right kind of people come into your life. So through my experiences of me just serving, I have been blessed to see the mysteries of God. 
Notice I didn't say serving someone else. And what I love about studying God's word is this. The word of God is so clear on not just what we think, but in how we're thinking. Go to Matthew 7 and 6 if you can. It says, don't give what's sacred to the dogs and don't feed your pearls to swine. So in our serving and in our part, of doing what God say do in order for people to come be a part of what we're doing to assist us, we have to be careful that we're not doing it for the wrong reasons and with the wrong people so that the seeds that we sow would fall on bad ground. Watch what he says right here. While I'm doing my part and while I'm doing things, I have to be careful not to give what that which is holy unto the dogs. Holy means sacred. I know the church make you think it's long skirts and, and, and no makeup and all that stuff. No, holy simply means sacred, that thing that's most important to you. He says, don't give this kind of thing that's sacred to you. What's sacred to you? Your money, your time, your treasure, your body. Your, what's sacred to you? What means a lot to you that you're giving? He says, be careful here. Because in order for somebody to get anything from me, I have to give it. And I got to differentiate what's important to me and what's not. Right here. Give not that which is holy or sacred unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you or go against you and spit on you or say, mm, y'all. I'm going to get up out of this seat. You ever experience giving someone something of importance to you and they turn around and acted like it meant nothing? Or have you taken something from someone and you didn't care what the situation was? After you got it, you just left and did your own thing. Not a criticism, just an observation. I ain't scared of nobody and I hate nobody. Those that understand God's word, you're to do your part, but you're also to be real clear on the people God sent to you because they're going to assist you in accomplishing some things. But you're also supposed to be very clear on the second verse when he says, that way I can see my desire when I'm with the wrong kind of people that don't see this this way. Don't give what's sacred to the dogs and don't feed your pearls to swines. They're going to spit on you. And this is, the word of God is not to scare us or to make us feel bad. It's to inform us. Mm -hmm. Say so. The boring place versus the problem place. Mm -hmm. We tend to pick and choose the ones we want to help us with unhealthy intents of wanting to receive something in return. Today, it still rules. It's just not being used. The golden rule. Let me say that again. It still rules. <laughs> it's not just being used. The golden rule. Too often we expect everyone else to practice the golden rule when we won't practice it ourselves. But the wonderful lesson that can only be learned is when we understand clearly that when I am really helping me, it's when I'm helping others. Or when I'm assisting others, I'm really helping me. When I do my part and do what I'm supposed to do, where God's purpose and vision is there, it's designed not just for me, it's designed for others. And whoever come on with me can see that and help me accomplish that. Mm -hmm. So when I really assist people from a heart perspective and a God's purpose perspective, I'm really helping me too. That's why you got this negative craze away in 2024. It's just me, myself, and that. When I'm, I, I'm a server. When I understand that helping someone else really helps me see some things, 
or when you really help someone else, it helps you more when the others are served. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's a boring place, but it's not. It's seen and felt when you really help someone else. When you are assisting them, it makes you feel good. If you're not helping people, assisting people, it's a strong possibility you won't experience this. Yeah. Here's what I like about God when he says, pay attention. It is better to take refuge in the word because in the word it will tell you that he that is great among you, let him be a server or the ones that serve him, they're the greatest. Because while you're serving, God is setting you up that others right where you are and what your plans are are being positioned to come to your rescue to assist you in getting where God has you positioned to be for you. When you assist others, do your part. Make sure the right kind of people are with you towards your vision and what you're doing. And he says, they are, they will be designed to help you. You'll see. But he also says, be careful where your heart is, wanting people to be there with you, and they hate you. That's our responsibility. This is how God's word works. You should never expect too much when you are giving to others. Do not give to receive. Listen, even in your private place and space. Those are the problem places. Sometimes it seems boring doing what you know is right. But that problem place is giving what's important to you to somebody who give less than a continental B. And you will see it after it's done. You should never expect too much when you are giving to others. Have you ever read about the bamboo? Read it, read it and look it up. The bamboo, is it, the, the taller it grows, the more it bends. In, the world, in other words, the bigger you get, the more you assist. Yeah. Closing. When life is all about you, that's a problem place. Be very careful there. When you serve, you increase. When you just take, you decrease. Or... When I serve and my heart is what it needs to be, and someone see it and assist me, we all increase. But when I don't see my heart with the wrong kind of people, they don't see what I see. We decrease, I decrease, and they do too. What appears to be boring to some, even in this season of 2024, Matthew 20 and 26, write it down. Everything I share with you, you go to the word and say, wow, I read that right there. Matthew 20, 26, he that is great among you, let him be a server. Yep, the servers are the most valued people and places and positions of and through God's word purpose. When we serve, when we understand our part in something, we can see clear that God sends the right kind of people to assist us towards an objective. We also can see clear in our hearts or the desires of our hearts, those that don't see things like we see them, that hates or see things differently than what we're doing. Know the difference between that boring place versus the problem place. Ain't this some good stuff? Yeah. Practice it in your personal walk. Watch how God begins to give you revelation. Revelation means things to be revealed. Like, wow, I never looked at it like that. Watch this. And the promises take place for real. Yep. Let us pray, Lord, we love you, we give you honor, we give you glory. Thank you for this message today, differentiating the boring place versus the problem place. And we're to do our parts. And while we're doing our parts, there'll be people that's going to help us the way you've designed them to be 
the integrity, the character of a patient that they can see coming into a thing to produce it is crazy amazing. And we're clear on this. And if they're visionaries, they need to understand that how you have positioned them to do their part, that they're supposed to do their part, where God is going to send them, people, to accomplish what they're supposed to do. And when I'm helping somebody else and when I'm helping myself, those are two separate places. They both articulate excellence and order. Thank you for your word being so powerful that in this crazy mess age, you are still sending a clear, amazing message. We are to know the difference between those boring places that's crazy amazing, and he that is great among you are servers, doing our part, than those problem places of being around the wrong kind of people in the wrong places that don't at all see what we see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right? Is that a crazy message or what? Crazy, amazing message or what? Yes, sir. It's crazy. I love God's word. Woo! It, it, it breaks us down now. Yeah, it, it like, wow, God. It, and it, when he says the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and added no sorrow right there all the way down. Yeah. I've lost some weight. I'm excited about it. Um, but it was something I had to do my part. Yeah. I had to do my part. And, and, and I'm going to share you a secret. Sometime God sends some amazing experiences to mature you. Mm-hmm. Don't forget what we what we don't win with, we learn from. Learning from a situation is so amazing because we won't look at the people or the experience or, or what's, what has happened. We look at the experience that's there to teach us. Mm-hmm. Stop looking at people. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah. But against principalities, people in high places, wickedness, which means sometimes people are people. But your responsibility is to observe and learn what God's word says about this experience. And that's how you differentiate things. I love the word of God when he says, when you have all against your brother, you go to him. Because we're not supposed to throw our brothers away and sisters. That's what the word says. He said, go to him, work that thing out. He says, if you work that thing out, you have gained a brother. He says, if you can't work it out, shake the dust from your feet. God's directives are crazy, amazing. All right? Here go our actions for this message. I hope this word has blessed you. Did I pray? Lord, thank you for this word. Bless us as we become a lamp. Your word become a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway. Today our message was differentiating of the boring place versus the problem places. The boring places appears to be where we serve and we are to do our part incredibly. And that you got to promise for us that's going to blow our mind, but those problem places is where we're in places and our heart can't see your word to deflect what's not supposed to be. Thank you, God, for your word being amazing in our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay, here are the actions. All right. Uh, Ooh, this one I like. Although we are human, we're spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, when people say, I'm just human, they're talking about in the natural. Right? Those, that's the feelings and emotion place. You know, the spiritual place is how we're living in our hearts. And in our hearts is how we choose our treasures. So where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Which means if you don't want God's word as our treasure, then living our lives without without God becomes our treasure. And this is why I put this on here. I am a human spirit. Because if you, in your heart, that's the only way God can connect to you. He can't connect to you in your feelings and emotions. He can only connect to you, to you. Your heart want him. And he says, I see you connect. But if your heart don't want him, those are your feelings and emotions, and there's no connection to God. Two, I value God's word more than I value things. And you know, over here, I teach things are what? Thoughts. But now, don't forget, things are also clothes, hair, cars, houses. That's the man's definition of things. So this works in both ways. I value God's word more than I value cars, clothes, hair, jobs, all that, because he already had this scripture for me, for real, or my thoughts, because he says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, 
but the end thereof are the ways of death. For there's a way that seemeth right to Darius, but the way that thing gonna end up not gonna be so cool. Not death like in dying, but death meaning spiritually you are separated from how God wants things to be. And here's the third one. I'd rather trust you than you make me feel good. Read that again. I don't want you to make me feel good. I can get those from any places. My best place, even if you make me feel good, I'd rather be able to trust you more than you making me feel good. Because mm -hmm. if I could trust you and you could trust me, we could do so much better than feelings. We can set up a foundation of consistent love, joy, peace, and life in the more abundantly. Ain't that word crazy amazing? I'm honored that you would listen. I'm honored that you would take the time to just check the word out. And my prayer is as he's blessed me and changed the way I see things from a darkness into a marvelous light, that God does the same thing to you because you individually get into God's word for every step you take. It's an amazing place to be. Amen. All right. Let us. I think I did pray, right? Okay, I love praying anyway. Man should always pray. There you go again. Lord, thank you for this word. Let it fall on good ground. Let it fall on those who I want to understand the difference between a boring place and a problem place. How uh, we're to do our part no matter what. Your word, which is what that part is, and that you'll send the right kind of people that see what we're doing and they'll assist us and make this thing happen with the right like minds. But you also told us to pay attention to our hearts to see those that don't see things like this. Mm -hmm. That's what you said in your word. They're humans. But then we see the ones that are human, spirit, that can accomplish the things your word say we can accomplish here in the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right? I hope you have enjoyed this uh, thing. Uh, this thing is this message tonight, Tuesday, that it was very impactful for you. And every Tuesday we do a toast to the word. Huh? Ways to give. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> See? I want to give you so much. I forgot that you got to give to us. Mm -hmm. here's, here's ways to give if this message has blessed you. Great Central Church and for GraceCentral.net. GraceCentral.net online giving. Check or money orders. 102 16 South Kitchener Street, Westchester, Illinois. Cash app. Dollar sign Grace Central. It's a great institution to invest in. Call the church. 708-344-5020. Somebody will come get it. I'll come get it. Try me. I dare you to say, Pastor, come get this gift I have for the church. I'll be there in a New York minute. Y'all know the New York minute is quicker than swift. The swift is quicker than quick. I often say with the swiftness, quick would be too slow. Quick is like this. Wow. Swift is like this. It's already gone. Okay. The boring place versus the problem place. Great message today. Okay. Uh, cheers to the message. Cheers. <laughs>